in one of the parishes where I've served as a priest. A woman had been diagnosed with a deadly illness and was only given weeks to live. Her doctor told her to start making her final preparations. So she decided to invite over all of her close family and friends to express her final wishes and to make the preparations for her funeral. And she also invited me, the priest of the parish to come to the preparations. And she told all of us there the songs that she would like to have played at her funeral mass, the readings she wants to have read, and how she wants to be dressed in the casket, and how she wants to be buried with her favorite Bible. And then, as I am about to leave, she says, don't leave, Father, don't leave. There's one more thing. I want you to make sure that when I am buried, I am buried with a fork in my right hand. I want to be buried with a fork in my right hand. I was shocked and didn't know what to say. And then she explained that her favorite part of being in our parish church was all the parish dinners we would always put on. And that she would always wait as the people were clearing the main dish from the table somebody would come over and say, you can keep your fork because, as she says, that meant that something better was coming. You can keep your fork because something better was coming. Keep the fork. Usually it was a scrumptious, delicious, finger-licking dessert like ice cream or cake or pie, she said. And so she says to me, Father Adam, when I get buried and people see me at the viewing and at the church in my casket, I want them to see the fork in my right hand. And I want you to tell them that Lucy has the fork in her right hand because something better is coming. We call this day Good Friday. Not Bad Friday. We call it good because we believe that something better, something good comes out of this experience today of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We forecast to Easter Sunday something better is coming. But in the meantime, we glory ourselves in the cross because the cross is a gate. It's not the final destination. The cross is a gate by which we enter into newness of life. You know, I'm always reminded of an old African tradition, how people greet each other. They say, I see you to the person, 
in Africa, and the other person replies, I am here. They don't say, how are you, like we so often do. Oftentimes, we don't even wait for the answer. We just do it automatically. But in this particular African tradition, the person says, I see you, and the other person replies, I am here. Good Friday is the day to see Jesus. In just a little bit, we will have the adoration of the cross. To see Jesus on the cross and to ask the question, what's happening there as Jesus hangs on the cross? Who's being crucified? Do I see this? Am I here? It's easy to say the historical Jesus who walked 2,000 years ago on earth was crucified. That's nice, 2,000 years ago in a time removed from this day. But Jesus continues to walk right here, right now, in his body, which is you and I and all those around us. And this body, Jesus' body, which we are, continues to be crucified around us. Jesus continues to be crucified in you and in those around you. Your body is Christ's body, and those around you also are Christ. They are Christ's body. Right now, the crucifixion is still happening in hospital rooms, in natural disasters, in the problem-filled lives we lead in our issues, in people like Lucy that I talked about who are given weeks to live, in cancer diagnoses, in your addictions, in a pandemic with so many people who cannot make ends meet. Jesus continues to be crucified in all the people who experience depression, hatred, betrayal. Read the account of the passion of Jesus again, please. It's happening. The cruelty of one person inflicting pain and anguish on another. We continue to crucify one another. I will never forget walking into Auschwitz, the infamous concentration camp in Poland where I've already been nine times because I live not too far from there. My family lives not too far from Auschwitz. And on the wall there is a sign that says, this is what one human being prepared for another. Gas chambers prepared by people for people. Millions of people burned to death. And it continues to happen to this day. We prepare concentration camps and gas chambers and torture chambers for one another through our sinfulness. We prepared the cross for Jesus and we continue to prepare crosses for one another. When we feel forgotten and abandoned and alone, when you're marriage is torn apart by infidelity, when your spouse of 35 years says, 
I have someone else. I never really loved you. The crucifixion happens when you feel forgotten and abandoned as so many people do today and alone because no one cares enough to invite them for Easter dinner or bothers to see if they have an invite because we're such selfish people. We think of me, myself, and I. The crucifixion happens. People alone this holiday. I talked with one lady the other day who says to me, you know, Father, my son called me and told me, Mom, you can join us for Easter via Zoom, but only for 40 minutes because that's my limit on Zoom. I haven't bought the extension for Zoom. You can have Easter dinner with us via Zoom. That's the reality. And yet we call it Good Friday. Why? Because in the midst of any crosses we face in our life, the best is yet to come. So you have to be real and confront your own cross. But Fill yourself with the hope and the joy that you do not walk alone. God is always with you. I am particularly touched by the scene of it's really three lines from this whole gospel reading. Jesus meeting his mother. And I'm, I'm particularly touched by this because I have been watching the news and the trial of the police officer in Minnesota of the senseless murder of George Floyd and what makes the most impact on me is when George Floyd is on the ground crying for his mother it's that scene of Jesus crying also for his mom. Have you seen The Passion of the Christ by Mel Gibson? It makes a big impact on me when Jesus meets Mary in that movie. When the two of them meet. The cry of Jesus seeing his ma mother from the cross Behold your mother, behold your son. The response of the mother should be our response. And what was Jesus' mother's response? She was there, wasn't she? Fills me with great emotion to think about. 
this scene. Mary being there. She didn't take Jesus off of the cross or demand that they take him down. No, she just stood there with Jesus at the cross. She was there. She accompanied him. Everyone else left and abandoned him. But Mary was there. She didn't leave. When faced with your own issues, have a statue of Mary like I do. And I look there and I say, you know, Mary's there with me too. When faced with your own problems, Mary is there. He gave her to us from the cross. Behold your mother. So when your own crosses hit you, know that you are not alone. You know, when a child is scared at night, what calms them down? We have some children here today. What do the kids do when they're scared at night? They run into the parent's bedroom and they climb into bed with the parent. It restores calmness and brings comfort. The parent doesn't enter the child and remove the problem. The parent is there in the midst of the problem. Well, that's what God does with us. And that's what God wants us to do with each other to be there, to be there. I see you. I'm here. And when you're there for people as Mary is, I want you to remember what you need to say if you need to say something. Remember, we preach the gospel at all times. Only when necessary, we use words. So our presence is the most important. To be there for people and to remember the best is yet to come. It doesn't end here. No matter what you're facing in your life. Hmm? You've been there before and you got through it and you will get through this as well. That's why it's so wonderful to have faith in our life. because it fills us with great hope that the best is yet to come. As we continue our journey, seeing each other and being there for each other, as God, in his great love for us, who gave his life for us, sees us, and is there for us. I'm always touched, you know, because I've been to Auschwitz nine times, the concentration camp. And when people entered Auschwitz, they were tattooed with a number. They lost their identity. We are not numbers. We have a name. We are so very special. So special that God died for each one of us that first Good Friday. The devil's a number, isn't he? 666 six, six in the book of Revelation. God gives us a name. We are not numbers. So in the midst of this 
climate of this throwaway, disposable culture that we live in, where everything is disposable, not just cups and forks, but also people. We come to church, and I'm so proud of all of you for being here today to fill ourselves with that dignity. And this pandemic has really robbed so many of us of our dignity. This lady I spoke with this week, she says, you know, I don't have much dignity anymore. They want me to have dinner via Zoom. It's really horrible. You know, my own mother going to, uh, I won't say this, I'm getting off the topic here. I'll talk about that some other time. Yeah. We'll continue with our Good Friday liturgy today. As we, let's sit here for a couple of minutes in silence, and then we'll continue with our prayers. 